Um, Robbie, we don't want to hop on this result too much, you know, rather look forward and sort of what improvements can the box make. But there's clearly um, a problem at halfback. I mean, I guess Pollard's performance had a lot to do with the service he was getting from Hochard, who didn't have a good game. Um, yeah. The feeling I got watching that test match is that we, we needed to stick to our traditional strengths of defence playing for territory. It feels like, it seems like the box kind of are torn between this, um, and it happened during the Divi era, era as well, torn between whether to, to run the ball or not. Um, you know, we had serious defensive lapses, and I mean, what's your take? Yeah. Now, first of all, uh, just to sort of extend the uh, the healthy disagreement uh, uh, with Garen today, um, I, I'm I'm still a pro Pollard uh, player, mm. as you said. Um, he was he was severely influenced by a sort of what I gave as a four out of ten, and some people were screaming for two or three out of mm. ten performance from Francois Hochard inside him. Um, so that, that doesn't help a fly half, especially a 20 year old fly half. Mm. Um, the one thing we've got to remember is that Andre Pollard is only 20 years old. Mm. Um, so there are going to be errors and hiccups along the way. Uh, what matters more for me at this stage is that he's produced two excellent performances against the world champions. Those are the sort of games that he should perhaps be, mm. be most judged on. Uh, only, only a few weeks ago he was slicing you know, a knife through butter um, past the All Blacks defense mm. um, and, uh, and doing some good things. He's clearly a, a great talent. Um, what I will say, and I, it may sound a bit contradictory, but I wouldn't object to him being pulled out at this stage for the England mm. game because I think maybe the, it's not a bad juncture for the box to actually look a little bit more at, at, at experience. Um, mm. Lambie is, is playing pretty well, mm. um, looking, looking more and more like a sort of a, a more polished, uh, more authoritative sort of mm. player. So I wouldn't object too much if there was a swap, a strategic swap this mm. weekend. I still think Pollard is the man for the long term. I think the more games he gets under his belt, the better. I hope he then comes back into the mix potentially and gets lots of game time against, say, Italy, maybe Wales, the two supposedly easier games mm. towards the end. Um, I, I still think he is the answer, but th there is a big issue at scrum half, no, no question there. Um, and the box have got to do something about it. The sad thing is, there's nobody who is a kind of a tactical maestro um, mm. in their mix at the moment as a scrum half to, to do the chore. Um, Mm. That's where the box are breaking down a bit at the moment. It's affecting the whole sort of synergy of their mm. backline because uh, Francois Hochard is, is a, a great guy to have for sort of dry, high felt type pitches mm. with his sniping um, and just his sort of belligerence. Um, but you've got to have a bit more than that when you're mm. playing on slow northern hemisphere pitches. And I don't mm. know if any of him, Krubus Reinach or Jano for Mark, mm. quite frankly, um, is, is going to provide too many answers. And that's a bit of a concern for Twickenham where there are no other sorry, options. Do you think Pinar would have been ideal for this, these conditions? Yes, he would have actually. Um, I'm not a huge fan, uh, especially when the box play on, on drier fields. He mm. sometimes can be seen just a little bit frustratingly sort of pedestrian. Mm. But, but in the north, you know, there is a little bit more time sometimes to have a little look up mm. and just assess uh, situations um, and and his as you know he's got massive experience too so that's something that would have served the box well he's got a good a good sort of tactical boot on him um, mm -hmm. which which would have meant something uh, on the day because the box just they looked a little bit rattled they looked a little bit too frantic um, and as you say they look they made some strategic errors they, they were perhaps a little bit arrogant in not uh, accepting kicks at the posts when they were there when the score was mm -hmm. you know something like 6-0 and then 6-3 or whatever it was in the first half and the box also had chances to go for the posts and thought, oh, well, let's go for the line out and rumble over for a try. Mm. And of course, sometimes those tries didn't materialize. And uh, once the Irish had their noses in front um, at the break, um, mm. that's, that's dangerous because then, uh, you know, that Irish passion really gets going. And, and I sort of felt that we were perhaps in for a, for a rough day. Mm. And in terms of other personal changes that we might see, um, probably in the, in, the, in the back row, um, I mean, at least our scrum and our set pieces look decent. So set piece was yeah. pretty decent. A little bit of an issue around Ibn Etzebeth, who's not mm. producing quite mm. the, the level of rugby he was in 2012 and 2013. I'm not quite sure what the reasons are, mm. but uh, he, he either needs to be full of fire and brimstone against England, which I suspect is, is possible, um, or they might have to look at bringing in a sort of a, you know, the old, the old master uh, Bucky's Porter or something. But um, they don't want that pack to get too sort of creaky in, in age terms. Mm. So I rather hope that Etzebeth uh, retains his place, gets a little bit of a rocket perhaps this week and is told to, to just shape up a little bit more because um, uh, he's certainly capable of doing it. Um, back row, as you say, we were cleaned out at the, at the breakdown a little bit. Um, there will be some criticism of me for saying this, but I, I think perhaps somebody like Opa Mohoje, um, his lack of experience uh, mm. came out. He's, he's definitely, uh, you can tell that he's not, not really that well versed, understandably, in playing mm. in Northern Hemisphere conditions. He's barely played in mm. the Northern Hemisphere at all. So um, maybe you need to go horses for courses for the, this now really tough um, mm. must-win game against England. 
Um, perhaps Skulk Berger needs to come back into the starting mix because he also helps your breakdown play a little bit. Although he also looked a little bit sort of headless chicken when he came mm. on uh, and, and looked like a sort of a penalty waiting to happen all the time, um, as much as I'm a, a big admirer of Skulk. Mm. Um, so n not an easy situation, but uh, I don't think the box will make wholesale changes. Um, I think if anything, there'll be, there'll be a tweak here or there. And perhaps JP Peterson, uh, after a good showing mm. off the bench, is another who might come into the yeah. back line. Again, experience, um, uh, quite necessary, I think, at, at Twickenham.